The offer of a full-time position is tempting, to say the least. But it would mean relocating to Singapore. The chance to work on such a project is... <sighs> Quite frankly, the opportunity of a lifetime. As the time grows nearer, I find that I am feeling considerably less guilty about my decision. I'm not sure if this is because of or in spite of the chaos currently gripping my home country. I am deeply optimistic about this project's potential. Of course, there is always the possibility of something we haven't accounted for. The human consciousness is at its very core fundamentally unpredictable. Despite my unfamiliarity with the larger goals, the project's director seems very satisfied with our department's progress. Despite having only met in passing, I am sure Mr. Kruger's influence will play a key role in my future. Today, I said something I regretted almost immediately. I asked a question that I should not have asked. A question about the test subjects. Who were they? Before, the human mind holds many mysteries. Bio-augmentation technology has given us the tools we need to unlock many of these mysteries, heralding a whole new era in the treatment of psychological trauma. Our ability to analyze and, in essence, quantify neurological activity has advanced more in the last five years than in the previous 50. Such data allows us to better diagnose, understand, and ultimately treat each individual's uniquely personal condition. The nature of memory, or more specifically, its elusive and sometimes entirely subjective nature, has been at the heart of my own neurological research. Over the last century, countless studies into the use of techniques such as hypnotherapy and nlp have clearly demonstrated that the human mind is an extremely malleable and fragile thing cognitive neural interfacing isn't just science fiction we're fast approaching a reality where it will allow us to remove specific memories of severe psychological trauma with the same surgical precision with which we remove any physiological anomaly. As with any groundbreaking research, our greatest barrier is our own fear, our own doubts. The only thing holding us back is how far we are willing to go. Should the international community refuse to endorse the use of human trials in any form? <laughs> I have little doubt that we will once again see scientific progress fall under the control of unscrupulous regimes and individuals for their own uncertain goals. This would be a tragedy. From the trials undertaken thus far, it's clear that the majority of patients exhibit signs of mild to severe psychosis immediately following each procedure. The duration of these episodes can range anywhere from a few seconds to several hours, during which time subjects appear unable to distinguish the implanted memories from their own. Similarly, the increasing recurrence of base fears, phobias, and even dreams can themselves contribute to a temporary overload of their conscious minds. For the purposes of future research and assessment, I have named this phenomena cognitive dissonance. In essence, it is a fleeting, primal disconnect between what one's senses perceive and what is reality. For the safety of myself and other staff members, it is imperative that we take steps to minimize the threat posed by patients gripped in the throes of CD. Now, I am reluctant to resort to the use of physical restraints, I may be forced to do just that if we are unable to achieve mental stabilization through a combination of drugs and therapy. My presentation to the senior committee was well, extremely well received. Sebastian Kruger himself was very enthusiastic about my recent findings. While many aspects of this field have been well documented over the last decade, Kruger seemed particularly interested in how the negative effects of cognitive dissonance 
might potentially be reversed in order to create or enhance positive experiences. While I have some ethical reservations about the realities of what our research involves, I am warmed by the idea that, that my work could lead to further breakthroughs in the treatment of victims of severe psychological trauma. Subject E38, criminal class, has proven somewhat unique within the current group. Despite his steadfast refusal to cooperate or communicate, he has nonetheless had a considerable influence on the other patients. In interviews conducted immediately following sessions involving E38, multiple subjects recalled near identical accounts of extreme violence and brutality. Cross-referencing their accounts with data on file, it would appear that these recollections correspond with one of E-38's most notorious crimes. At the time of his arrest, Zhe Zhong was believed to be responsible for at least 42 killings carried out on behalf of the 54 immortals, the criminal organization to which he swore allegiance. Most notable among his crimes was the infamous execution of rival gang members in a manner that would become known as the denial of reincarnation. The literal and metaphorical removal of the victim's senses was intended to provoke the fear of absolute death, devoid of hope for an afterlife. Having established an effective dosage, subjects have proven extremely receptive to therapy. The combined use of positive visualization techniques has led to a reduction in instances of CD in 80% of test subjects. I am increasingly concerned that the central intelligence software that collates and monitors the subject's neural data is itself exhibiting errors. On several occasions, data packets have inexplicably appeared on subjects' neural traces in direct conflict with real-time chronology. Despite my recommendations for further research before proceeding to the next phase, Kruger seems determined to move on. I am in little doubt that he is driven more by monetary interests than a desire to improve people's lives. In the wake of recent board meetings, to which I was not invited, rumors persist that Kruger intends to conduct the next round of trials at another undisclosed location. <laughs> no doubt for logistical reasons. While I cannot speak as to the company's latest developments with DNI itself, I find myself troubled by the fact that Kruger not only chose to ignore my concerns, but also to exclude me from the Phase 4 research team. His decision has left me no choice but to resign from my position and seek a future elsewhere. As of day 42, only four of the original test subjects survive. Of the others, most died of coronary failure during the trials. One died later from self-inflicted wounds. Mr. Kruger, I don't think you quite appreciate or even understand what I'm telling you. Oh, I understand, Dr. Salim. I just don't agree on how your perspective, your limited perspective should influence my decisions regarding the project's future. The Corvus program has been an unmitigated success. You should take pride in that. Please listen to what I'm saying. The exchange of information is a two-way street. If you remove humans from the diagnostic loop, there is no way to predict or control or influence. We're standing on the verge of a brave new world here. Zurich is where the Corvus program can fulfill its true potential. It is important that we all feel calm, that we all feel safe. We all want the same thing. Focus only on my voice. Every word I say helps you relax ever deeper. There is nothing to fear. Let your mind drift back to a time when you felt free from all the stress and all the worry of your everyday life. Somewhere calm, somewhere safe. Breathe slowly and deeply. 
As you become even more relaxed, you begin to feel the air brush against your skin. Whenever you are afraid, I want you to imagine yourself standing in this place of safety. Calm and at peace. Group D trials are now underway with a new set of subjects. Similar physiology, different environmental conditioning. Primary focus is to establish any correlation between the recorded neural traces and subsequent cognitive recollection. Early results seem promising. Post-procedure, subjects recall the intended stimulus with relative certainty. Post-immersion. Several subjects have experienced fleeting bouts of paranoia. In these cases, I have been unable to determine if this was a pre-existing condition or a consequence of the procedure itself. Following minor seizures during trial, Subjects D2 reported a brief period of impaired hearing. Similarly, D5 complained of a decreased sense of taste. Unfortunately, adjusting Group D's chem levels has so far failed to reduce the frequency of seizures among subjects. With Phase 5 trials complete, Phase 6 will seek to replicate the results of the original research team across a larger group of test subjects. Assuming that subjects' cognitive processes are successfully identified and analyzed, plans are already underway to move research operations to our Zurich HQ. Their facilities will allow us to assess the potential for expansion of the program into other... emergent technologies. Zurich is where the Corvus program can fulfill its true potential. We're standing on the verge of a brave new world. 